Freedom, equality, opportunity for all. As long as you work hard enough, anything is possible. Anything. It's the American dream. But what does it actually look like when real people are involved? That's what I'll be exploring in this video, Minari vs. Nomadland. When we think of America, it has a lot to do with land. Live the dream, settle and stake your own soil. In his 1931 book, Epic of America, James Truslow Adams popularized the phrase American dream, describing it as that dream of a land in which life should be better and richer and fuller for every man, with opportunity for each according to his ability or achievement. Yet, that very notion has changed over time, with new generations, political climates and education systems. As we see in Minari and No Man Land, American soil looks rather different when seen through another lens. Both films approach the American dream from opposite ends. Jacob is the pinnacle of what the American dream stands for. He invests everything in its promise. He immerses himself in the grind because he believes persistence will pay off. It's the reason his family moves from Korea to the States, to chase his dream and create a better life. Fern is at her rope's end. She's lost her husband, job, and essentially everything, despite spending her whole life working. She doesn't have much to show for it. Disillusioned by the promise of stability living a normal life, she embarks on a journey living in her van as a nomad. As we're introduced to both their experiences, it's their surroundings, with juxtaposing colors and landscapes that reflect their inner states. Minari shows America is vibrant and fertile. There's optimism and hope. In contrast, America in Nomadland is dull and sterile, synonymous for disillusionment and despair. These visuals paint the blueprint for the distinct ways both films battle the ideal of the American dream. There are several polar differences between Jacob and Fern. Jacob is the naive optimist. Even his wife doesn't share his enthusiasm. <laughs> Fern's extensive life experience has left her more of a pessimist. Loss of your husband and loss of your whole town and friends and village and that kind of loss is never easy. This may be because they live in different eras or in different points in their lives. Jacob is the young family man, hungry for more. Fern has worked her whole life and is now considered old on the job market. She's still eager to work, but most employers define her by age. I need work. I like work. I'm not sure exactly what you would be eligible for. Jacob brings with him the novelty of being an immigrant, accustomed to a different culture, yet excited by all America has to offer. As he integrates and adopts an American way of life, he becomes more of an insider, complementary to society's expectations. In contrast, Fern is a born and bred American, all too aware of the realities of living there. She chooses to go against the grain and live on the outskirts of society. She becomes more of an outsider. Still, neither of them ever truly fits in. There's a sense of otherness, and it sticks. Regardless of where you start, you still have to contend with standing out as soon as you challenge the status quo, be it by how you live or your mere presence. Both Fern and Jacob have the courage to sacrifice what they know in the hope of something better. As we follow their journeys, it becomes clear that both Jacob and Fern share a common desire for a better life. Jacob believes he'll get it chasing the American dream. Fern if she steps away from anything resembling that. It's strange that you encourage people to invest their whole life savings, go into debt, just to buy a house they can't afford. Their experiences are even more stirring, knowing they're based on true stories. Nomadland includes real people as actors, whilst Minari is based on the director's own life. 
Through them, we see struggle and the repercussions of our choices. Jacob keeps chasing, even if it comes at the cost of his marriage. He's contending with a caricatured version of the country that inspires people to come to America in the first place. Although we don't know how Fern was before, she's now lived in America long enough to understand the deep roots of capitalism. She's learned the danger of wasting time on things that don't matter. He died 10 days later, having never been able to take that sailboat that he, he bought out of his driveway. And he missed out on everything. And he told me before he died, just don't waste any time, bro. Don't waste any time. For Jacob, it's only when his mother-in-law, Sunya, moves in with him that his certainty is challenged. She brings Korean roots that aren't interested in change. We see the two worlds clash, as young David would rather wear cowboy boots than share a room with grandma, because she smells like Korea, even if he hasn't been there. There's a Korea smell. You've never even been to Korea. Grandma smells like Korea. Sunya succeeds where Jacob does not. His big plan backfires and he loses everything he's grown. Eventually, it's Sunya who thinks small and scatters the Minari seeds that is able to succeed as a farmer. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> In this way, we see that we can't run from our roots. There's no roadmap to success and chasing something for the loss of yourself isn't worth it. It's more fruitful to acknowledge that what we consider a better life will differ from the person standing next to us. We don't have to settle for a life that doesn't serve us. In fact, unsettling ourselves can be more fulfilling than we ever imagined. American or not, dreams are universal. Living that dream starts with figuring out who we are, what we want, and staying true to that. Meandering is part of the ride. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this.